Good evening, Mr. Tom Shea. This is Paul Cundiff back from Belize. I don't know if you've been watching Facebook or not, but uh, uh, we've been working steady here uh, while I've been off working on a boat in, uh, in Belize, Central America for the rich and famous uh, movie director Roman Coppola, his daddy's Francis Ford Coppola. Anyway, um, so I just wanted to give you an update. Uh, you'll have what you'll see in here is some of your interior flooring parts and uh, which were built out of pine originally of course they were pretty well rotted out as you can see and uh, also some of your original seat parts some of which were mahogany and some of which of course that got covered were pine uh, so that's uh, that's those pieces um, we also realized at um, recently at one point that the transom on this boat was plywood, which you see right here. And, um, of course, I've covered up the plywood. <laughs> uh, the, uh, and what, I'm, what I want to illustrate to you is the fact that the plywood did not have the ribbon stripe grain. The plywood was uh, a structural plywood, actually, and had kind of a, a cathedral-type grain. Let me show you an example of it, and maybe I've even got some pictures that I can show you later. But, and there was one other thing that would make it a get dead giveaway that it was wrong, but um, the, uh, so the grain, the grain on the, uh, on the back, there we go, was similar, huh? was similar to this grain right here. The, the, the grain on the transom. So not ribbon stripe, but actually cathedral. Um, so um, anyway, the wrong, the wrong grain. So um, we, uh, we laminated the same wood that we used for your decks right here. This is, this is Morandi is the species. Philippine mahogany. We we laminated that wood uh, on the back to your uh, uh, to your plywood. So, um, and as you can see, it's got the uh, the ribbon stripe grain. Now down here we have a book match, just a little bit of a cathedral, but that'll uh, be painted down there. So the other thing that was could be a dead giveaway that it was wrong was the transom on Chris Crafts comes comes behind these deck pan, these deck boards so the way this was put together back here that would have been a dead giveaway that you know just something was wrong of course this gets covered with a stainless steel band so this plywood won't show uh, but uh, so we did that without asking I apologize for not asking first uh, but it didn't need to be done uh, we have a contingency, and then my thought was that we'll take that money out of the contingency uh, to do the job right. Uh, then the second thing we discovered that I want to show you is that um, some of these planks up here that were, I thought were replacement planks, ends up as these were original planks. Um, up here, uh, the planks that were, were still on the boat. Uh, and one of the things my son noticed was that if you pushed on this plank, it moved in separately from this plank. So the result of that would be, had we gone ahead and stained and varnished, as you move down the lake, these planks would be moving at different rates, in and out at different rates, and breaking your varnish at the line here. So uh, the realization was is that these planks were no longer properly fastened to the battens and the frames on the inside. The battens being these horizontal um, members that uh, cover the plank seams. Uh, and so we popped a few bungs out and we found that not only were the fasteners um, not holding, most of them were just corroded. Uh, let's see if I have a few I can show you. Yeah, I do. 
most of them are corroded. The heads were uh, were corroded. We we had trouble extracting them um, because the heads were in such bad shape. Here's one. Whoop, there's one I can show you that you know the heads were just in terrible shape um, and uh, s such bad shape that we were not able to actually extract them with a screwdriver. We had to use a special tool. Um, Let's see if I've got one laying out. Well, anyway, we had to use a special tool. It's called an unscrew them, and it is essentially a hole saw with the teeth um, such that everything cuts in reverse uh, when the drill's in reverse. And so it would grab a hold of the heads and back them out. And of course, the heads, most of the time, the heads would just crumble off. And so we'd go to a smaller size of unscrew them, and we started down over the over the top of the screw. And once we got down so far. Then it would unscrew the the fastener. So that's some additional cost in that um, as well. So I wanted to give you an update on that because uh, we are really getting ready to uh, we're getting very close to staining and varnishing. And uh, uh, here's the picture. You can see all the areas that we had to open up. Uh, and replace fasteners in. So uh, the other side seemed to have been refastened at some point in time, and we didn't have the same problem over here. Uh, well, I'm told we didn't have the same problem. I guess I need to double check that, but I'm told that we didn't have the same problem on the port side as we had on the starboard side. So anyway, just wanted to give you a quick update show you where we were on the progress on your boat and wish you a happy new year.